Welcome to the iPod Touch First Generation Take Apart Guide. The first and second generations are very similar. The main difference is the front black bezel that surrounds the glass. On the back of the iPod you can find the serial number along with the model number. To open the iPod you will need to use a flat tool. In this case a putty knife was used. Gently slide the putty knife in between the front case and the back case and gently pry to open the casing. If this is your first time doing this, take your time and be careful to not warp the casing and scratch it. Once you have one side of the iPod pretty well spread apart, just begin to work around the whole outside edge and spread it apart until the back casing comes off. Once you have all the sides worked loose, the back casing will just come off. There are two components found in the back case that can be removed. First of all, you have the antenna cover. There are two small Phillips screws that hold this in. Next, you have the power button cable as well as the power button. There are also two small Phillips screws that hold this in. In most cases, you'll have to use a flat tool to remove the cable from the back casing. After the cable assembly is removed, the power button will just fall out. Next is the logic board and battery removal. First, the top small section of the logic board, you will notice two small Phillips screws that will have to be removed. You'll also notice the small cable here that will have to be unplugged. Take a flat tool and gently pry up on the cable to unplug it. Now you can take out the two small Phillips screws. Now the small antenna board here is actually adhered to the glass. Take your small flat tool and pry up on it to remove it. The next step is removing the battery. The battery cables here are actually soldered on to the logic board. You want to get a flat tool such as your putty knife to remove the battery. Gently slide your putty knife under the side of the battery and gently pry up to begin removing the adhesive. 
Do not slot it in too deep because you can damage some cables that are located underneath the battery. Once you have one side started, switch to the next side and use the same procedure. Once both sides have been started, take your putty knife and slot it in from the top. Again, be careful because there are some cables located underneath the battery. Once the battery is removed, you can now see the cables. Make sure that you haven't damaged them. To unplug this black cable, which is the LCD cable, Take a flat tool and gently pry up on it to unplug it. Now remove the top small section of the logic board and gently slide your flat tool underneath the cable to remove it. Make sure you have this cable out of the way here when removing the small section of the logic board, which is the digitizer cable. Now that you've worked that cable loose all the way down, it's now time to remove the larger section of the logic board. There are two small Phillips screws located here. You'll also have to remove the black tape located here to find the other two small Phillips screws. Remove all four of these screws now. Now take a putty knife and gently slide it underneath the cable here and gently pry up on the logic board to remove it. You may have to wiggle it back and forth to remove it completely because of the dock connector. Once you're able to bend that section back, you can now see a new section of the logic board. This part is adhered to the glass and you'll have to use a flat tool to pry it up. Now it's time to remove the LCD panel. There are a row of screws on each side of the LCD panel, totaling 16 screws. Remove all 16 screws from each side of the LCD panel.
Once all the screws are removed, simply take a flat tool and pry up on the LCD panel to remove it. Thanks for watching the iPod Touch first generation take apart guide.